The RTX 3080 is still one of the most popular and widely used GPUs, according to the Steam Hardware Survey. And honestly, that doesn't surprise me. This graphics card is still powerful enough to deliver an excellent gaming experience at 1080p, 1440p, and even 4K in many cases. Meanwhile, the new NVIDIA generation doesn't offer many cost-effective alternatives. RTX 3080 is faster than the new RTX 5060 Ti model, and only about 15% slower than the RTX 5070 in most games, yet it can be found on the used market for a significantly lower price. The 5070 Hi, which is around 40-50% faster depending on the game, costs up to four times more, at least in my country. So even in 2025, RTX 3080 remains a great option and fully deserves its current place in Steam's list of popular desktop graphics cards. However, I recently came across a video comparing the RTX 3080 with the 5070, and I noticed several comments from people who were upgrading from the 3080 to the 5070. That seemed a bit unexpected to me, especially considering the relatively small performance difference between the two. Then I saw that many of those users mentioned the RTX 3080's high power consumption as a key reason for switching or skipping it entirely as an upgrade option. That's why I decided to make this video. I want to show you that there is a quick and easy way to make your RTX 3080 much more power efficient, cooler, and quieter. It is a procedure that works not only with RTX 3080, but also with most NVIDIA RTX GPUs. It is called undervolting. It also works with many AMD video cards, which is why you probably see so many videos about undervolting the RX 9070 and RX 9070 XT, especially the latter, due to its significantly higher power consumption compared to NVIDIA GPUs with similar performance. In today's video, I'll show you that the RTX 3080 can operate with a power draw as low as that of the 5070 Ti, and even lower than the 5070 in some cases. I'll also show you settings that can significantly reduce the GPU's operating temperature, which can be especially important during hot summer days or when using a compact PC case. Lower power consumption and temperatures mean a lower average case temperature, less stress on the power supply and quieter operation of all system fans. These factors are important when you are choosing a GPU upgrade, no matter if you are buying a new generation model GPU or something from the used market. So, what undervolting means? Basically, it is a strategy that lowers the voltage supplied to your GPU while maintaining the same clock speeds or as close as possible. In many cases, the manufacturers set up the GPUs with a significant voltage headroom to ensure stability across all units. But that extra voltage generates extra heat and increases the power consumption. Undervolting is often used as an optimization strategy, also for CPUs. I have a good example in this video here about optimizing Ryzen 7 5800X3D. Without the undervolting, 5800X3D generates a lot of heat and its clock frequencies are not stable. With undervolting, you're optimizing the voltage to frequency curve to make the component, whether it is the CPU or the GPU, run more efficiently. And by that, I don't necessarily mean slower. The idea here is to find the best spot where performance is stable and around the same as before the procedure in terms of FPS. But the power draw is significantly reduced. In some cases, you may even get better performance while having quieter and more power efficient GPU operation especially for laptops, small form factor PCs, or systems with more stressed power supplies. Undervoing can be a game changer if done properly. So now let's see how you can do it. Start your favorite games and check the average frequency that your GPU is keeping during gameplay. Different games stress the GPU in a different way, so the frequency may be different in each case. You need an overlay to observe the frequency. You can use MSI Afterburner or the statistics overlay that NVIDIA app provides. In Forza Horizon, my GPU is keeping stable 1,905 MHz, same frequency in Horizon Zero Dawn. In Valorant, it goes slightly below that in some cases, so I would say that to keep the same performance or similar, the undervolting should target a frequency around 1,100 MHz for my GPU, but of course, with much lower voltage and power consumption. The frequency target for your model may be different. Write it down somewhere because you will need it later. For the undervolting procedure, I recommend using MSI Afterburner. Depending on the chosen interface skin, somewhere you should see Curve Editor button. In some skins, it is harder to see it, so you either open it with Control F, or you can select the skin I'm using right now. Go to Settings, select the User Interface tab, and you will see the drop-down menu for selecting a skin. If for some reason Curve Editor doesn't work for you, go to Settings, General tab, and make sure that Unlock Voltage Control is selected. Before making any changes to the Curve Editor, I like to press the Reset button just in case. It loads the default settings and values for your GPU. When you open the Curve Editor, you will see the default voltage values for each frequency. 
For example, for my GPU, which is MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio, the default voltage for 1905 MHz is 987 millivolts. In a minute, you will see how drastically I am going to reduce the voltage for that frequency while keeping the system stable and well-performing. The curve of your GPU may be slightly different because it depends on the exact model, so don't worry if you see different default values for your GPU. To begin the procedure, you need to find the highest point of the curve of your GPU, which in my case is this one, 1118 millivolts for 1800 MHz and above. Press and hold Alt button and drag the curve down around the minimum boost clock for the RTX 3080, which is 1710 MHz. Press Apply button to apply these changes. Again, the values you see here are for my GPU. Yours may be slightly different, especially if you use a model with much lower stock boost clock than mine. My GPU is a factory overclocked model. Now the easiest and usually the recommended way to make the undervolt with less testing is to select a voltage value around 850 millivolts and move it up to the target frequency, in my case around 1,100 megahertz, and press apply. 850 millivolts are a good starting point. Now you need something to test the settings for stability. It could be a few GPU demanding games or a benchmark that can heavily stress the GPU like 3D Mark, which I usually use for stability testing. Testing is important. The system must be 100% stable, no exceptions. If you are going to use games for the testing, choose those that can be restarted faster in case they crash during the testing. If you remember, my default voltage for the 1900 MHz frequency was 987 millivolts. Now it's set to 850 millivolts. This will lead to significantly reduced temperatures and power consumption. Don't worry, later I will show you the results in multiple games and with different undervolting settings. If your system is not stable with the chosen settings, Reset everything. Drag down the curve again. It is important to start from the beginning. Now, test the same target frequency by increasing the voltage with 25 millivolts, which means 875 millivolts. If it is still not stable, add another 25 millivolts. If your GPU is stable with 850 millivolts, you can try lower voltage till you reach the minimum stable voltage for the target frequency. Usually, I set one step above the stable voltage just in case. So if my system is stable at 850 millivolts, I set it at 856 millivolts and save the profile. Now let's say that you need a profile for very hot days if you have a compact case and you don't have an air condition. For such cases, you can have a profile with lower maximum frequency and even lower voltage. Reset everything. Drag down the curve, press apply. Now, if I need my GPU to work at much lower temperature, I will choose a frequency that is about 100 MHz below the main target frequency of the undervolting. In my case, this would be 1800 MHz. Since my GPU is stable at 1900 MHz with 850 millivolts, I can set a maximum frequency of 1800 MHz with let's say 800 millivolts. Yes, this will probably slightly reduce the performance, but it is worth it if you need much lower temperatures and power consumption. You will see the difference in performance in a minute. It is not that much. Following the same strategy for testing, if your system is not stable at 1800 MHz with 800 millivolts, try with 825. If it is stable with 800, you can try with 775. Again, the idea is to find the minimum stable voltage for the given frequency. In the results later, you will see that I am also showing an example with 2000 MHz and 937 millivolts. It is basically an overclock, but with much lower voltage than the default one. I'm mainly showing this as another example of how the RTX 3080 can operate more efficiently even with additional overclocking. I don't recommend overclocking. I don't think it is worth it or even necessary. It is just an example. Something I want to mention here is that you may see some people to set multiple manual voltage settings for different frequencies. For example, they manually set one voltage for 1800 MHz, voltage for 1850 MHz, voltage for 1900 megahertz and so on. In my opinion, this is a waste of time. It requires a lot more time for testing because if the system is not stable, you need to figure out which of these steps are failing. It could be one that is causing the problem or all of them. And in the end, you don't get better results. I don't recommend this approach. Now let me show you some results. In Forza Horizon 5, with the default settings, without undervolting, the power consumption is around 310 watts. The average FPS is around 98, and the temperature goes up to 77 degrees. The clock speed is almost stable at 1905 MHz. 
I should mention here that I am using the silent BIOS of my GPU. With undervolting that has same performance, both the power consumption and temperature drop significantly. The power draws around 230 watts, which is lower than the power consumption of 5070 Ti and 5080 in this game with their default settings. As you can see, even when overclocked, the RTX 3080 consumes much less power and runs much cooler with undervolting. All these settings you see here have been stress tested for days and are completely stable. I am also showing the profile that is perfect for very hot environments or compact systems. Yes, the performance slightly drops, but what you get here is a power consumption below that of RTX 5070. Horizon Zero Dawn. With the stock settings, the power draw goes above 320 watts. The temperature is around 79 degrees with 193 average FPS. Keeping similar clock speed, but this time with undervoing, again, leads to significant power draw and temperature decrease. And the more aggressive undervoing settings lead to almost 15 degrees lower temperature and more than 100 watts power consumption. Now I wanna show you the results in a situation where the game is much less GPU demanding and there is a CPU bottleneck. This is Fortnite in performance mode. The GPU utilization is much lower, and because of that, the power draw and the operating temperature of the GPU is lower, even with the stock settings. But look at the difference with undervolting. Even when there is a CPU bottleneck and the GPU has very low utilization, with undervolting, the GPU consumes much less power and the temperatures are lower. In Valorant, the difference between the stock settings and the undervolting are even higher despite the CPU bottleneck. The undervolting not only leads to huge power efficiency, but also provides stable clock frequencies. As I mentioned before, these settings work with my GPU, my unit. Every unit is different, so you may get better, same, or worse results than mine. That is normal. Be patient, tweak slowly, and test longer. The idea is to have a quieter, more energy efficient, but also 100% stable system. Feel free to share your results in the comments below. Please hit the like button if you find this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.